Hi, welcome to Haven. This is a podcast that's a safe space for curiosity and conversation. And today I'm curious about which parent did you marry? Okay, you heard me right. I'm curious about which parent did you marry or which parent are you dating? So I promise I have context for how I came up with this. We'll get to that later. But first, I want to introduce my guest, who is someone who knows me better than almost anyone. It's my little sister, Clancy. Woo woo! I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. This is the best because Clancy and I have very different opinions on many things. <laughs> most things, I would argue. The opposite, really. The opposite. You know, that one friend that we have in common, mm-hmm. Like, I would say two weeks ago, she asked us each separately, Mm -hmm. what do I do if I like my friend's ex? Mm -hmm. And what I said was probably the 15-minute answer of, well, how close are you with this friend? Was she in love with him? Like, do you want the friendship to remain? There's 8 billion people out there. Half are men. So that's 4 billion men and one friend. You should choose your one friend. Or all, like, very long-winded. And she texted me and she said, Clancy said. Just date him. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, she's going to do it anyway. See, just do it. The spice of life is variety over here. (laughs) So I can't wait for this topic because we're both married. Yes. And we're going to talk about which parent did we marry. Yes. And it's going to sound less weird than just saying it like that. I mean, you've said it about 15 times so far. (laughs) Okay. Each time I'm not here for a roast, but thank you, little sister. (laughs) Sorry. Sorry. No, good. I want the episode to be a little spicy. Okay. I'll be nice. No, please. Well, don't be mean, (laughs) but don't be nice. (laughs) Be yourself. Love it. Yes. Oh, yeah. We're using our hands like this because um, my other uh, cool girl advisory board, if you've heard my last episode, there's another woman on there named Angel, and she runs uh, her own TikTok, and she said that if you show your hands, people think you're trustworthy, but if your hands are behind your back, then people don't know if they can trust you. So I almost opened the episode saying, hi, I'm Haven. (laughs) You can trust me. (laughs) We're having fun, people. Anyways, so the first thing is I'm going to talk a little bit about my relationship with my husband. His name is Aaron. And then you can tell me a little bit about you and JJ. And then we'll kind of get into what um, pattern maybe we saw them from like other um, caretakers or parents in our lives. Does that sound good? Love it. Okay. So Aaron, the love of my life. He and I have been together for, oh my gosh, I should have done the math before I'm trying to do this live on a podcast. For this summer, it'll be 16 years that we've been in relationship. We've been friends for 18 years, and we've been married for 10 and a half. Um, But when we were dating, so he was my first, like, official boyfriend. And I remember even telling him when we were dating, like, thank you so much for being such an amazing first boyfriend experience. Like, you set it up so well. And I was being sincere, and he goes, why you – we're still dating. Why are you calling me your first boyfriend? (laughs) I didn't think it was going to go past that because, I mean, when does that ever happen? But I really, really meant it of like, you were so wonderful and set up such a great bar. And then we just kept going all the way to life. (laughs) I mean, he was still a great first boyfriend. He really was. It is true. He really was. He's still a great first husband. I'm not going to say that, actually, (laughs) because I don't even want to put that out there. He's my only husband. And but the way that we met. Mm -hmm. So I we actually met when I was 13. And we were going to pick up my brother from some type of like summer camp and he was getting off the bus and he's like, oh, I want to introduce you to uh, my new friend. And Aaron turned around and I actually had electric shock in my heart, like a physical palpable. He hadn't done anything. He just turned around and I just remember feeling something really strongly. And I just thought, that's so interesting. And looking back, especially like Aaron had braces. (laughs) He was, (laughs) he, um to me he was so cute but I'm like oh my gosh like he was so quiet like I wonder what that was um I think ultimately is like some type of familiarity or or I don't know exactly how to explain it but that that was my experience and so the way we got to know each other was we were part of a large church in Texas they had separated the junior high and high school so the junior high had like 800 kids and I was playing drums at it and when I went into the high school which was like 1500 they're like we want you to play drums and I said I'm not good enough like I don't I don't think I can play like at that level yet. And they're like, well, come play for the first week and see how you feel. So I was like, okay. So I went to play for the first rehearsal and I was introduced to the band. And then all of a sudden that super cute guy turned around, he was playing guitar. And I said, 
I'll be here every week. <laughs> I said, you can count on me. I'm in. I'm in. I will play drums here. I know I can do it now. Now I just know. But I wanted to get to know him better. But we had a friendship. We had a, a band in, a, in high school, like the quintessential. He would come over with all of our friends on Friday night. We'd play music. We'd bake cookies, like watch The Office. Like we had a long friendship before we even started dating. But that was like the past. And what I'm looking back and realizing, I didn't realize that I had, here's the, here's the headline. I married my mom. Like my mom and Aaron are so similar. If you know Myers-Briggs, they're both INFJ, which is actually pretty rare in and of itself. I am also INFJ. Wow, interesting. Mm -hmm. I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. You totally are. Mm -hmm. You know, out of the whole family, everyone, um, I stands for introvert. Everyone in our family is an introvert except for me. Mm -hmm. I'm an extrovert. Kayla too. Yes, she married in though. Sister-in-law. Oh, yeah, you're right. She married in. But you know, JJ, your husband's an extrovert. Oh, very much so. Very much so. Interesting. So, but also, whatever you believe about astrology, my mom and Aaron are both Geminis. And they're so playful and sometimes very mischievous. Like they're, they just have a lot of similarities, a lot of similar interests. They're creatively bent. They're artistic. Um, but I found it so interesting because especially when we were like dating or considering marriage, I have seen a long path of the women in our lives um, being strong, baller women. Like our grandmothers ran the show, but they had um, more – uh, subservient-ish men. And I remember just thinking, I don't want to marry. Um, and again, I love, love, love my dad. We have an incredible relationship. Growing up, though, it wasn't the same. That came in adulthood. I had a much better relationship with my dad. So at the time, I thought, okay, I don't want to follow that pattern. Like, I don't really want to marry my dad. I don't want to. And I didn't even think, wow, I could marry my mother. <laughs> in to some extent, you know? But I remember, like, even thinking about grandmother of, um, that's my mom's mom, is she like owned real estate and she's so sharp and she can cut you with words. I remember Aaron being around, he was so quiet after a couple months of dating and he finally said something and she goes, oh, he speaks. Like, so rude. But grandmother, she would cut down my grandfather a lot and she told me that I told her this as a child, I don't remember it, but she said that I came up to her when I was eight and I was like, hey grandmother, you realize that when you tear grandfather down, it doesn't make him look bad, it makes you look bad. Oh my gosh, no. I didn't I've never heard that story. Yeah, she told me that and I was like, "Oh my gosh, like that's when it embedded to me of like I want to be a strong woman, period." Mm -hmm. But how how can it not come at the cost of my spouse? How can it not come at the cost of um emasculating them or um you know, putting them into a position of lower where I run the show. I actually don't really really want to run the show. I want to be free to fly, but I need I really was like I need a partner who will voice their opinions and be strong about it. And then I need to bridle my strength and listen to them. Mm -hmm. Like I need to not assume that I'm right and like want to run the show. Aaron married his aunt. <laughs> his aunt is, okay, if you have kids in the car, I'm going to have you turn down the volume for the next 10 seconds. Because I've listened to podcasts where all of a sudden they say something. I'm like, yeah, I wish you had a heads up. So pause. She's a badass. Okay. Welcome back, people with children. She can run the show. She owns her own business. She wheels and deals. She took in my husband as his aunt when he was essentially an orphan and moved him from Florida to Texas to be with her, give him a better life. Like she is incredible. So Aaron married someone who's like, oh, I'm used to that. I married someone where I'm like, oh, I'm used to my mom. So we kind of go with what's familiar, good or bad all together. So tell me a little bit on, cause we, I asked you this question and you didn't realize cause you're like, Oh, I didn't marry mom or dad. Mm -hmm. You married. I married our uncle, my uncle. Tell us more. I did. I did. Well, very similar to you, but I think I ended up in a different spot. Okay. So very similar about, I'm, I'm very introverted. Mm -hmm. So definitely a bit more quiet. This but is hard for you and you're killing it. <laughs> yes. I like, you're doing great. I like being the one with the little quips in the background. Yeah. Um, but I have the mic. So much more introverted, but I do still have the classic f family line of strong women. Mm -hmm. Very strong willed. But I married the opposite of Aaron. Mm -hmm. Very extroverted. Very 
quote, traditionally masculine okay. in hobbies and interests. It's interesting you go for um, traditionally masculine because you had a time in your dating era where you did not like traditionally masculine. Yes, and I, I think I ended up in the right spot, but it came from an unhealthy position. So At that time? At that time, all the way up till we started dating. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, we, maybe our relationship started unhealthy. Oh, you it did. did. Yeah. Oh, oh, we should not have gotten married oh, as fast as we more, did. Tell me more. Tell me more. Okay, so the timeline. So, so if I was an overbaked cake, you oh. came out like of the pan jiggling out of the oven, like maybe give it more time. Like the cheesecake. Yes. We are a cheesecake that... Ends up baking overnight. Yes. But you got to take it out when it's basically still. Yeah, because you dated for four months before you got engaged? Uh, Six, I think. Six, okay. We started dating and got married within 13 months. Wow. Yep. But the long story, semi-short, is that I was very shy and very innocent and naive growing up. Okay. And then in a very formative period of time, I had a very bad relationship Mm -hmm. with a very traditionally masculine man. Mm -hmm. With an unhealthy power dynamic. With a very unhealthy power dynamic that ended up ripple effect for a very long time. Yeah. So I pendulum swung, swung, pendulum swunged? Swinged. Swinged? No, I'm making that up. It's not (laughs) swinged. I went the opposite direction. You're usually off camera to answer this. I know you're right. I'm just nervous. You're doing great. I went the other direction Uh and started, as one of my therapists said, castrating men. Okay, yeah. So I would go for men that I could be in the power position Mm -hmm. or be in the control position because they were safe, Mm -hmm. which was fine for a time. Because you didn't want to feel powerless anymore. I didn't want to feel like I wasn't in control and someone else could hurt me. Mm -hmm. I either wanted to initiate the hurt or be in a position where... I was in the power, the unhealthy power dynamic, right? Yeah. So it ended up being dating a lot of very, very sweet, kind of <laughs> wet blanket. Gosh, type I love of them. Men. They're so nice. Oh my god! All they loved you so much. You yes. were the sun, though. They orbited you. Yes, it's true. Which is also not healthy. Mm-mm. So dated that growing up, or you know, young twenties, and then met JJ, mm-hmm. and there was just something about him that I liked. Mm-hmm. But it was also all of the things that I hated about men. Wow. <laughs> like That must have been confusing inside. And it was confusing for him because I was very vocal about it. Wait, so vocal about? I don't like these aspects of you that I uh, like about you. <laughs> I'm telling you, I was a psycho until the day I got married. Wow. And then everything and became And then a fairy tale. it was because it was safe. Oh, whoa. Okay. So. That's met, actually beautiful. Yeah. It, we... If someone else came to me and we, that had the relationship dynamic that JJ and I did, obviously, I mean, this is a bit hyperbolic, uh-huh. but if they'd come and six months in, been like, we want to get engaged and uh-huh. married in another four months, uh-huh. my advice to them probably would be, no, don't yeah. do it. Okay. However, it ended up being right for us because I was in such an unhealthy place. I did need some safety. Mm. And I think if I had gotten there on my own, it would have been safe to just date. Mm-hmm. So I'm not saying get married <laughs> if you're insecure, yeah. but right. it did provide what we kind of talked about was it provided the garden fence mm-hmm. that kept out things mm-hmm. that would let our like garden grow. Wow. That's so, so beautiful. But starting out was not great in that... I tried to, quote, castrate him. Yeah. Even coming out the gate. Mm -hmm. In so much as when I first met him, I, you know, said hi, whatever. And then for about two weeks, I pretended that I thought he was his brother. (laughs) On purpose. On purpose. Sure. So my husband's name is JJ. Mm -hmm. He has a brother named Albert. I would see him at church and he'd be leaving. Mm -hmm. And I'd say, oh, so great to see you, Albert. See you next week. Mm, Yeah. A little game. (laughs) Just to be mean. (laughs) And then (laughs) I denied him and when he asked me out like a thousand times. Okay. Because he's very determined. Now that you know his side, what was he thinking? Did he know you were playing a game? Oh, he had to. He's a smart man. He had to have known. But he was also determined. Do you think he saw you as a challenge? Oh, for sure. And he's like, oh, this game on. A hundred percent. Because traditionally, he had no problem getting anyone to date him. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of women Mm -hmm. that would have been 
very happy to date him. He's so charming. So charming. So smart. I mean, I love him. He's literally my favorite person on the entire planet. Hmm. He's just the best. No, we're not at happy and knee yet. We're at the middle of the story. Okay, middle of the 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 story. So, again, played all these games Mm -hmm. in that, like, I didn't follow him on Instagram, but I would watch his stories Mm -hmm. every once in a while. Do you know that people look at their story watch and see who watches it? Yes, and he did. I didn't, yeah, I didn't know that. It's a thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's a thing. They're like, oh, someone's watching my story. I was like, you can look at that? Oh, it's a thing, and people look. And he looked and then followed me, and I didn't follow him back. Mm. And he, again, it was just this back and forth power dynamic. Sure. Which I know stems now from a place of insecurity or fear or just an unhealthy previous dynamic. Yeah, of course. So we would go back and forth. He would ask me out. I will say, I said no to him asking me out for a while because he kept asking to go out in group settings. And I'm very, very shy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you are. So I didn't want to be in a group setting because I'm just too shy. But anyways, he, he stopped asking. And I was like, "Why are you? Why are you stop? Why are you just stop asking Wait, me out? We're not playing the game anymore." <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh huh. Hey, JJ, not Albert. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I know your name now. Hey, so I know your name. Uh huh. And then I asked him out. Okay. Because I was like, "Yeah, this dude stopped asking." I guess seventh time's the charm. Okay. And we met up for drinks or whatever, and he said that he was afraid to walk me to the car because he was like, "Oh, I know." She's this, quote, strong, independent woman. She would probably be mad if I asked to walk her to her car. So he didn't. And, of course, I was like, this fool didn't walk me to my car. Yeah. <laughs> so. Interesting. The different things at play, though, of, like, him assuming it, and it seems very, like, mind gamey. It of, was like, very. Of, like, what is she thinking? I'm afraid to do this. I want to do that. Yes. Very mind gamey both. And very much, again, I was confused as to why I was attracted to a very traditionally masculine man and I thought it wouldn't go anywhere mm-hmm. I started out the gate the first time we hung out I said by the way yeah I don't want a boyfriend I don't like you like that so if you're gonna ever develop feelings for me we should stop now what was the actual <laughs> internal thing you were feeling that you were protecting I like you so much yeah <laughs> <laughs> she just spit. It's all good. You like him so much. I like you much, so much. And you were too scared to say that. So you're like, I'm going to push you away first. Yes. And I don't know yes. why I like you, but I just like do. And it probably was like, oh, I'm out of control now because I can't control that I <laughs> like you in this moment. Yes. Take it back to of he reminded you of who you were living with at that time, which was our uncle. His name yes. is Justice. Yes. And they are both very um, out there, charismatic, handsome, charming. And so also it felt familiar too because that's what you were used to. So you were like, oh, I've seen it work out because Justice and his wife Maria have been faithful for years and years. Like their Mm -hmm. marriage is so authentic and so real. So you're like, oh, I've seen this work with you now. Yeah, Yeah. 100%. And and what I've realized now looking back is that he and Justice both, and Maria too, I'm just thinking of them as like an amalgamation, Mm -hmm. both gave me the same thing during the period of time that I needed it. Which is justice for about a year. He and Maria asked me to live with them. And because he knew I was in just a really bad place. And finally I hit rock bottom and I agreed to move in with them. Again, came in guns blazing like, don't tell me what to do. I'm not going to go to church with you. I'm not going to go to a small group. Later. With the finger in the voice. (laughs) No, thank you. No, thank you. (laughs) So, Mm -hmm. but I did move in. JJ says it's a coincidence that it was at the same time that we started hanging out. But that is not true. (laughs) I moved in on my own. You moved it on your own, for the record. For the record, I moved it on my own. But what I remember is Justice saying, hey, there are no expectations. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go to church with me. It's not why I'm asking. You don't have to do a small group. You You don't have a, quote, curfew, nothing like that. I'm just here. Maria and I are just here to tell you every day that we love you. That's it. It is so beautiful. We are just here to... Their belief and what they told me was if we tell you enough times positive things about you and show you love without any anger, any control, any unhealthy anything, one day our positive reinforcement may just outweigh the hurt that you've had. And maybe, I know I get emotional too. I'm feeling so emotional (laughs) hearing this. And maybe one day that'll be what, you know, heals you. And it it really did. It really, really did. Just being in an environment of 
because there were a lot of similarities between Justice and JJ and the man that I had a very unhealthy, abusive relationship with. Wow. All pastors, all the same age, all very extroverted, very, quote, masculine. Mm -hmm. And I also remember JJ, once we started kind of getting to know each other, before he even started officially dating, Mm -hmm. said, hey, I don't mean to say this in any weird way. I'm not expecting to date or anything, but I would like to at least show you as an example what a man of God could look like Mm -hmm. instead of what you've experienced them to be. No strings attached, no expectations, but please give me at least the chance to show you that that is not something to be afraid of. And so they were both very vocally doing the same thing at the same time. And that was very healing for me. And I realized that I, because I am very shy, very emotional, need a lot of emotional support. Very tender. Very I actually needed someone that was stronger and more, not controlling, but just a stronger boundary, a a container that helped me be able to be free. Again, it's the safety of the container. Mm -hmm. Um, And both Justice and JJ were that. Um, So it's so beautiful, even juxtaposed against... So you had a very sweet high school boyfriend. Oh. So sweet. I love that guy. And then right after your high school boyfriend was the unhealthy one. Mm-hmm. And that, it it, um, it pisses me off to this day. I didn't really want to say that word. But mm-hmm. to me, it, it I, I don't want to go there because it's not about that. But that was so unfair. And it was so wrong. And it was um, such a different trajectory of your life that I think Justice and JJ helped you reclaim. You mm-hmm. were trying to do it on your own of like, okay, no man's going to affect me, like Mm -hmm. no one's going to hurt me. But the solve for that was love, Mm -hmm. true masculine love. Mm -hmm. That's what helped. Yeah. And it was the kind of love that I think I needed a strong man. Like JJ and, you know, Justice weren't, they weren't phased by me Mm -hmm. saying, you know, calling JJ Albert. He wasn't phased by me being like, I don't want to date you. Mm -hmm. FYI, don't fall in love with me. (laughs) Totally. So dumb. But every man you've ever really met has fallen in love with you. I mean, maybe. Who knows? I don't know. Yeah. Um, But that didn't phase them. Mm -hmm. And it put it into, again, you're right, like it healed through love. And and one last thing on that, too, I'll say is that during that period of time that was very unhealthy, Justice was the only person who tried to stop it. So no other man in my life did anything about it. Aaron came to me and and talked to me about it. But Justice was the only one who said, I'm going to go over to this person's house right now. And I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do, but I'm going to stop this. Yeah. And we weren't used to that. Like we weren't used to that kind of like male dynamic. So it also felt aggressive. Like even deep down, you're like, oh, I'm so glad he's doing that. But also that felt unfamiliar at that time. Oh, very much so. Yes. Yes. And my grandmother ended up stopping him (laughs) being like... Back to the bad women. Back to the bad bad A women. You know, she can take care of herself, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, But yes, that is kind of how I ended up marrying my uncle, which is interesting because to you, it was marrying someone that was familiar from the get-go. Yeah. To me, it was marrying someone that was familiar from a safety, loving, healing standpoint, even though that was a little bit later in life. I think that's so lovely, though, is because it doesn't just have to be a caretaker familiar that you find. Like, you can find health later in life. Like, Mm -hmm. you accept the love you think you deserve. So Mm -hmm. if you're in an unhealthy place, you're going to be accepting unhealthy love. Mm -hmm. But if you can even get to the point of, oh, I have different standards now for myself and for others around you, then it, it does trickle around. Yeah. And you can change later in life. It doesn't just have to be like, okay, what parent did you marry? It's li- now that we're talking, it seems a bit of a bait and switch title. Yeah. It's mainly what love are you familiar with? Yeah. That's what I would say is almost a better arc of yeah. what love are you familiar with and what love are you accepting? Mm-hmm. And why are you accepting it? And is there better love out there mm-hmm. that you can access? And how? Yeah. How, how would you say? I mean, I will say one caveat. Okay. Don't date in order for someone to heal you. Yes. That is when I reference, oh my God, we shouldn't have gotten married that fast or I was psycho. It worked out for us, but I will say we should have 
done and he had a lot of his own insecurities coming into it but it was just beautiful that mine offset his mm-hmm. um we talk about like we really do believe we're the perfect i don't know if i believe in soulmates but as close as you can get sure because we offset each other but we should have done the work before or at least not looked to the other person to be the thing that healed us yeah it ended up working out because we both were really really invested in the church and therapy Mm -hmm. (laughs) so Both. both of us came in saying hey we recognize that we've got a lot of unhealthy behavior we want to be together, mm-hmm. but it's not going to last if I'm the reason why you've suddenly become healthy and vice versa, because that's codependency. Yep. So we have since then become more independent and I am a stronger version of myself by myself now. Yeah. You're two holes coming together, not one half looking to the other half. But mm-hmm. I think the reason it works is because um, you put in a lot of work. A lot. Like a ton. It comes intentionally. It's not going to be natural. I remember for before I married Aaron, because I was like, um, I didn't, again, it was joking. I didn't know I was going to marry him, but we were coming up on college. I did my bachelor's, um, in three years. He did in five. So we were graduating at the same time because mm-hmm. he was two years older. And I remember being like, okay, this is maybe a moment where it's like a go or no go decision. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I don't know. I know he's my best friend. I know I'm in love with him, but I don't want to just go because I haven't experienced mm-hmm. other things, but I don't really want too, because he seems wonderful. And so I, I remember praying and I was like, okay, God, um, I know that you're giving me choices here. I'm not putting it back mm-hmm. on you to choose for me, but I would like a peace in either decision because um, if it's not, I'm going to be gutted and heartbroken, but I would rather do this now and not because I marry him out of fear of there's nothing better. Mm-hmm. But if it is, and I really want it to be, then can you... Um, just give me some type of, type of peace. Mm-hmm. I remember two weeks later, I felt like almost like the dam in my heart that I had put there out of protection mm-hmm. because I never spoke about getting married to him. I never spoke about our future life because I was like, that's a dangerous thing to go to. And then if ever we're supposed to break up, we've made all these plans. Yeah. But for me, it felt like that that boundary fell off. And I was like, I can't wait to marry him. I can't wait to be with him. I can't, I can't wait to have this life transition. But I remember it was around the same time of our parents' divorce and they, uh, mom was saying, I recommend you guys do a year of individual Mm -hmm. therapy before you get engaged. Mm -hmm. She was like, just to know what you're bringing into the marriage. Like, obviously you're going to be marrying humans. Like there's Mm -hmm. not, it's not like, you know, (laughs) it's going to be perfect. But she was saying, then you can get to know what you're about to form into. And it was the hardest year of our entire relationship. Things were unearthed in me. I wasn't aware of things were unearthed in Aaron. And I'm so glad we did it before we were engaged because what if something came up that we wanted to like not move forward on? Mm -hmm. It was helpful to have kind of the privacy of it, but that was the toughest year of our entire relationship of even our past and since then Mm -hmm. of actually saying, who am I? What am I bringing into this relationship that shouldn't be here? And how do we have healthy conflict resolution? Yeah. And our first year of marriage wasn't what people's typically is because we had done everything on the front. Like we had talked about, <laughs> yeah. every, like I knew who he was coming in, like, and he knew who I was like good and bad, but it took work. And if I didn't have someone wiser than me advising me to that, it would have been different. Yeah. It would have been completely different. But I think also like healthy relationships, healthy marriages are never by accident mm-hmm. ever. A hundred percent. Ever, ever, ever. It's intentional and it's daily choices. Yeah. And it's doing the work. It is. It is. And and it. a lot of times you'll hear like, oh, work is hard. I mean, uh, marriage is hard. Marriage mm-hmm. is hard. Marriage is hard. I guess. But like, it's, it's work, but it's wonderful work. Yeah. It's work. It's hard if you're the only one working on it. Wow. It's not hard if it's two people working on it together. It's really, really wonderful. Um, but you're right. It's, it's intentional. And I... Uh, made this a point when we first got married of we got married you know chosen each other I I do think like I said I don't know if there are soulmates but marriage to me is just a choice it's waking up every day and choosing that person choosing to be faithful and choosing to be faithful to the commitment I made with God as well Mm -hmm. and some things came out when we started going to therapy after getting married that he had kept hidden because he didn't like it about himself 
I led with mine. Yeah. <laughs> which was equally as unhealthy. Yeah. But I remember saying once after we got married, I feel like you didn't give me the chance to choose you at the altar. Wow. But I, I'm choosing you now in your whole self. Yeah. And we've chosen each other multiple times during our marriage. That must have been really healing for him to hear. I think it was equal parts hurtful and healing. Hurtful and <laughs> healing. Okay. Because it, I think it was, I, I wasn't people pleasing. Yeah. And saying, it's okay. It was, hey, you should have been yourself with me. But I understand there was, again, a lack of safety. He was afraid that if he'd showed all the parts about himself that he didn't like, that someone wouldn't choose him. So then once we got married, again, we had these boundaries. We were both safe. Then we started to open up. Mm -hmm. So I think it was both like, hey, this is something that did hurt me, but I choose you because I want you to know I love you. I hate the phrase, I love you despite X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. it, I don't, no, I don't love you despite X, Y, Z. I love you, period. Mm -hmm. Including I don't like all of you. <laughs> that is one of the best things I have learned. JJ and I both, it sounds weird, but it's one of the best things. We both like about 80% of the other person. Mm -hmm. There's 20% of JJ I don't like. Sure. That if I could rebuild, I would 100% change. JJ 2.0. <laughs> JJ 2.0 would be 20% better. Yeah. I love all of him. But it, wow. Because I love you is real. It's seeing the good and the bad and choosing it. If you're only focusing on the good, you actually don't love that thing. Yeah. You really don't love the whole thing. A hundred percent. And it makes me feel safer because then when I do things that he doesn't like or whatever, I'm like, well, 20%. Sorry. <laughs> it goes in that category. <laughs> but even touching back at what you were saying of the things that he was kind of protecting and hiding for himself, that 20% probably, he probably mm -hmm. knew that you wouldn't like it. Our counselor was saying that men do that. It's called um, protective lying. They think they're protecting you by lying. Mm -hmm. They think, oh, it would hurt more if I say this. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to keep it in. And what what they don't realize is actually it hurts more when it comes out later. Mm -hmm. It hurts me more when you're not honest. Mm -hmm. It still hurts when you tell me the truth, but I promise you it hurts less than when I find out about it later. Yeah. And that's a different, like that was like a big thing that I think is almost ingrained of toxic masculinity, going back to that, of telling them like, don't, don't show yourself. Yeah. Your whole self is not welcome here. Yeah. Yeah. Caveat too, JJ like didn't like lie a bunch of things or anything like that no. at all. FYI. It sounds like I'm looting time. He didn't. It was just the vulnerability, right? Yeah. Like vulnerability is honesty yeah. in its fullness. So, And even going about, um, I think you touched earlier on of talking about like if it's just one person, that's when it, it's tough. And I remember before, before I married Aaron, I was like, what do I want in a spouse? Like I'm putting Aaron away. Like what mm -hmm. do I want in a spouse? And I was like the number one that, thing that I want is someone who has an internal drive to grow themselves mm -hmm. outside of me. Mm -hmm. Like you have to want to grow because we're going to change over time. And if you want to grow, then I'll trust that we're growing parallelly mm -hmm. together. Not mm -hmm. intertwined, not intermeshed, not codependent. Mm -hmm. But I need you to have the want for yourself to be better outside of me wanting that for you. Yeah. And another thing that we learned there was like, especially in newlywed phase, it's like a triangle of, Here's me as an individual. Here's you as an individual. And here's us. Mm -hmm. If any of these are out of sync, it's going to topple over. Like if there's too much us and there's no individually of myself and no individually of you, then it gets like weirdly dangerous and like too intertwined. Mm -hmm. But also if we're living entirely separate lives and there's no <laughs> us, then like that's danger ground too. Yeah. Like you have to feed into each area. I have to feed into myself as my own unique person. He has to feed into himself and be responsible for his own growth. Mm -hmm. And we have to both feed into us together as a unit. Yeah. I, one thing we always say is that I, my responsibility is not to fill your needs. Mm -hmm. That is your responsibility. It is my honor to be able to provide things that you need mm -hmm. when you voice your needs. Yeah. <laughs> But it's not my responsibility at the end of the day yeah. to make you feel better or to fill your needs. But it is such an honor to be able to do that. When it's a choice. Mm -hmm. And even taking it, okay, so outside of our, you know, relational dynamics, mm -hmm. anyone who's listening here of, I heard something that Jay Shetty said. He said, um, 
that we all look for in relationships based on what we've seen previously of the gaps and the gifts. Mm -hmm. You're either trying to fill a gap that wasn't there in the relationship that you had with someone Mm -hmm. that you're like, oh, if they fill this gap, it's going to be there. Or you had the like wonderful blessing of gifts and you're like, I want my relationship to to be exactly like that. And and then if you do that, you're focusing on only these gifts you've experienced and not that the gifts that the person wants to give you, that's actually them. Yeah. Or even I think of like a healthy marriage is like that church that we went to in Texas. Those pastors had a beautiful marriage dynamic. I learned about how to have a healthy marriage from them. They almost went to the extreme of it. It was the point where it was... um. It was like the Ten Commandments of a relationship, and it was like basically boundaries Mm -hmm. of what are you going to do in your marriage? What are you going to do? What are you not going to do? Mm -hmm. So Aaron and I gleaned that for ourselves where we have our own rules of we never say divorce. Like Mm -hmm. I'll call the D word, and I won't even say that. Mm -hmm. Like never bring it up ever, ever, ever. Never joke about it. Mm -hmm. Never talk. Like even that's that's not an instance for us. We don't um, physically like – push each other, have too strong a grip, anything. Like we have strong physical boundaries. We try not to yell. (laughs) We try, you know, you know, you're human. But if someone is in violation of some of these boundaries, then it's like, hey, that's not who we are. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go take a pause. Mm -hmm. Or, hey, we don't treat each other that way. And it bounces Mm -hmm. back and forth. Yeah. And it's also, I'm not going to speak negatively about him in like friends or in public or anything, period. I'm his number one cheerleader, his number one encourager. Yeah. Afterwards, if I disagree, I'll be in the car like, uh, yeah, it won't be like, hey, yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> you know, I'll be like, mm, maybe. <laughs> but, uh, and I want that back too. Yes. But look, those are the kind of things of two of like, okay, if you're going to intentionally have work mm-hmm. in your relationship, what are your non-negotiables? Mm-hmm. What do we do? What do we not do? Yeah. Yeah. And but- I see, oh, before you go, I see even like marriage counseling. To me, I see it like the dentist, Mm -hmm. where it's like, I need to go for cleanings just to check out from an outside perspective. Um, They say, statistically, people go to counseling seven years past of when they should have. Mm -hmm. I don't want to show up when I have a root canal and you're going to have to do an insane surgery. Yeah. I want someone to look. I'm going to brush my teeth daily and floss. Yeah. But I see the outside party of, here's everything on the table. Is there like a healthier way? to handle this or can you help we can't figure it out yeah yeah I think one of the reasons ways we think about it too is when we got married we're building this house together now Mm -hmm. but therapy is what gave us the tools in the toolbox to do it yeah otherwise we're just like I don't know putting sticks together <laughs> like we what's, don't know what's a hair are you used for <laughs> sure I'll use this but and and we have these you know we call them fight rules okay which is what we do or we don't do um and this could just be my personal opinion, but every time people are like, what's your, you know, one piece of advice for marriage or whatever, it, when you ask anyone, the amount of times I hear, don't go to bed angry. Mm. Mm-hmm. Maybe, sure, for you. We go to bed angry all the time. Yeah. Like, that's okay. I'm mm-hmm. allowed to be angry. Mm-hmm. You're allowed to be frustrated. Mm-hmm. We love each other, but we've never slept in separate beds mm-hmm. or on the couch. Mm-hmm. If we're going to go to bed angry that's okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not responsible for nurturing to your feelings all the time. Mm -hmm. As long as I'm kind and honest and we follow our fight rules, Mm -hmm. right? And usually I actually just need a nap, honestly. Yeah. Or you're hungry. I'm hungry or need a nap. And so we'll go to bed in the same bed, angry. Yeah. And I'll wake up and be like, yeah, I just was sleepy. It's kind of like, (laughs) have you heard the phrase halt? You're either hungry, angry, Mm -hmm. lonely, or tired. That is, I don't think I've ever heard that. It's yeah. so true. So it's like halt. And you ask yourself, like, am I actually hungry? Uh-huh. Am I angry? Mm-hmm. Do I feel lonely? Mm-hmm. Or am I tired? Mm-hmm. That's so, and so much of it is also in your language. Sometimes mm-hmm. I feel like fights are instigated by how we say things. There was one time where Aaron was coming home late, and it was enough where it frustrated me so much that I brought it up in counseling. He was like, well, how do you feel? And I was like, I feel like Aaron's coming home late. <laughs> 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 That's not a feeling. That's that. And I was like, okay, I feel abandoned. He goes, that's mm. still about Aaron. <laughs> he goes, that's not really real. That's so true. He got to the bottom. He goes, you feel lonely. And I was like, oh. And he goes, and Aaron, like, don't you feel way less defensive when she says, I feel lonely? Yeah. Don't you want to be like, oh, honey, you know, what, like, what can I do versus, mm-hmm you abandoned me, you know, or whatever. It, it feels yeah. so dramatic, but so much of it too is in our language. Yeah. And that's, I could not, I could not have gathered those tools 
on my own. No. It takes either like resources or I'm glad that insurance is now covering, you know, more therapy. There's mm-hmm. options out there. But it doesn't just have to be, you don't have to stay in what feels familiar, good or bad. Yeah. Like you can kind of adjust your own. Because even what you're saying, your fight rules, I'm thinking people can make their own rules. Yep. You you can choose to go to bed angry and you exactly. and JJ agree upon that. Yeah. It, it's, it works for us. It, who knows if it works for someone else? They may have mm-hmm. a deeply rooted anger issue and it's something that they need to stick in it yep. and work through it before you go to bed. That is just what you guys need to do because that's your needs. Mm-hmm. One of the 20% of the things I don't like about JJ, he's a grumpy guy. Mm-hmm. He's, he's, he's the old man on the lawn that's uh-huh. going to yell the kids to get off the lawn. He's a grumpy He's a grumpy bear. Sure. I. It's endearing. <laughs> you fell in love with it. Uh, but is it 20%? Okay. So, you know what? Mm-hmm. We go to bed angry because, hey, you can be grumpy. Yeah. I'll sleep next to you and hold your hand when you're grumpy. Totally. That's fine. Yeah. It's, we don't need to stay up all night and fight about this. Just go to bed grumpy. Yeah, just go to bed grumpy. And I think it's so interesting because even – overall arc of okay which parent did you marry mm-hmm. if oh, yeah, you're back married, to the title of well, this yeah, whole thing the title of this this is like you know our own therapy of uh, <laughs> uh which parent did you marry okay if you're already married maybe have you ever thought about it yeah how did I even like what was I attracted to in this relationship that felt familiar and then if you're not oh my gosh how great to know this mm-hmm. how great to kind of learn this about yourself look at the patterns of who you've dated Look at those kind of things going into and being like, do I want to keep along this path? Mm -hmm. Or is there something I want to change? Even sometimes the response of, I don't want this. I don't want that. You do such energy that it always flips up somehow. Mm -hmm. So even resistance energy. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of being aware on that kind of front. And then typically we end these podcasts with questions, but I didn't put that up because it's a weird title. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think anyone would really. I don't want to know what the questions are that would come in from that. Yeah, that would be kind of bizarre. So, but I just really love this. So, oh my gosh, thank you for the vulnerability. That was so fun. fun. It was so cool. Um, There aren't any user questions, so we're just going to end it on this front. But is there anything else, like any parting words on the topic that you think you want to share? I mean, I've shared a lot, I will say. But no, I just think if we're talking about healthy relationships, whether you've started one already or you're in one or you haven't started one, I think to your point, it's... Any relationship is work, but work doesn't mean bad. Wow. Work together, Mm -hmm. and you can really honestly build something so beautiful. I freaking love being married. Being married is literally the best thing ever. Yeah. And I love being married to JJ in particular. That I just want to end on being like, I love you, JJ. And, well, he got the catch of a lifetime. So, like, whatever you say, it's like he's still coming out on top. Thank you. Thank you. No matter what happens, he's, you. he's still got to marry you. So, thank you, thank you. yeah, he's living fine over there. <laughs> he's loving his life. Loving the dream. Yeah, totally. Well, thank you so much for listening. Um, if you have any weird topics like this that you want to submit, I'm I'm totally game, obviously. So email me, hello at havenpod.com. Be sure to like and subscribe and review on YouTube. Follow me on TikTok and Instagram. The handles are popping up. Or you can just go to my Instagram, Haven the Podcast, and I have a link in my bio with everything on there. Uh, Really appreciate you listening in, especially daring on this weird title if you clicked on it and you're like, where is she going with this? I appreciate you following the train of thought. Um, I just like to go where I'm curious. And so thanks for going with me, and I'll see you next time.